Welcome to the Davos Agenda. I'm Tanya Breyer, and I'm thrilled to be joined by the Crystal Award winner 2021 and the world-renowned photographer Sebastião Salgado for an insight and conversation into his fascinating life. Sebastião, thank you so much for joining me today. Can many congratulations on winning the Crystal Award from the World Economic Forum. How does that make you feel? You've won so many awards in your life. Thank you, Tanya. Uh, I'm quite happy. This award has a meaning because uh, uh, it's placed in the center of the decisions of the planet. And uh, I have uh, a hope that uh, all these dignitaries that come for this meeting, they can hear a little bit uh, the people that are concerned with these awards and uh, our preoccupation, a way of life, uh, and uh, the, the impact to that, in my case, these pictures can uh, made it to the people that look into them. You see, we are all together fighting for a better life, for a better way of life, for the respect to, to other the, the, the people that has no protection. I'm quite uh, happy to receive this award in this sense. Of course, you've been documenting a very fast-changing planet for decades now. We're in the middle of the global pandemic. What is that like for you, Sebastian? Could you ever have imagined anything like this? No, 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 no. It's impossible to imagine something like that. Uh, I believe for our generation, my generation, the younger than me, because uh, uh, most probably the generation that lived the Second World War, the generation that lived before all this huge disease in 1918, you know, the, the Spanish uh, 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 fever that came around the world, yes, was possible then to imagine, but for us it was impossible. We were no one who were expecting this. And uh, it's, it's a special moment because the planet will not change. The planet has changed. We are living a different moment now. Everything in this planet has changed. And uh, I have a big hope that uh, we'll bring this moment we bring us toward uh, the essential in this planet. And uh, what is essential in this planet is to live a better life, to have uh, a nice relation inside our community of humans, have a sense uh, of solidarity. And uh, if, if you, we can reach something in that direction, I believe uh, that would be very important because we are paying a very high tribute. How has it impacted you personally and also your home country of Brazil? Me personally, impact a lot because my life in the last uh, 50 years, was moving this planet. I was recording uh, what I believe that was essential. Let's say I was navigating in the up of the wave of the history. And after one year, I don't navigate more. I'm here uh, uh, trying to protect myself because uh, I will be completing now in February 77 years old. I'm a bigger... Uh, my age is in a big danger, uh, the group of my age. Uh, I'm here with my wife that has 74 years old, and we, we are paying a lot of attention. I was working hard in Amazonia. I work hard with the Indian communities in the last seven, eight years. I prepare a big body of work. We've been having quite large exhibitions and books come out now in 2021 about the Indian communities and about the Amazonia in general. I had a big chance. I had to finish my shooting in Amazonia. I had just one store more to go. That was impossible to me to do because of the COVID. And I used this about one year that I stopped now to edit. My wife designed all my books. She designed the books. She designed the shows. And we use our time. But uh, you see... I had uh, many years uh, splitting my life uh, 
with these Indian communities. And all these tribes, they become very close, become very friends, and they are living a danger much bigger than ours because they have no antibody, they have no protection for the diseases coming outside of the forest. It was necessary to fight very hard this last year, mostly in the beginning of the disease, in order to try to protect the tribes, to create a kind of sanitary belt towards the Amazon forest to protect these communities. And this is a big preoccupation. We lose a lot of Indians in Amazon forest, but after a while, it seems that the things are going a little bit better. They are a little bit more isolated. And uh, uh, that was my most important preoccupation in this year, was fighting direct the protection of these communities. Because you, you led a global petition and wrote to the uh, President Bolsonaro to try and help the indigenous people, why do you think that it took people like yourself to push the government? Tanya, I have no power at all. I'm just a photographer. And uh, what uh, with my wife, we did, uh, we create one manifest, not exactly towards only the President Bolsonaro, towards the three powers in Brazil, the judiciary, the legislative, and the executive powers in Brazil. And uh, we arrived to obtain 67 signatures, the very important people around this planet, and uh, that create a huge impact in Brazil. And we had a very nice reply from the judiciary uh, uh, power in Brazil. The judiciary responded to our demand, and we acted together. That was very, very important, the results that we have, linked together with all the Indians Association uh, and all the, a lot of goodwill people that had the same preoccupation, we had a very, very, very big impact inside the Brazil with this. And of course, you say you're only a photographer, but you're one of the most celebrated and renowned around the world, Sebastião. Can you just take me back to your upbringing in Brazil and when you decided that that's what you wanted to do? Because I believe you started out in a life of economics. Yes. Uh, when we leave Brazil in 1969, we fly in the dictatorship in Brazil. My wife and myself was necessary to leave Brazil. We were very young. I was just 25 years old. My wife, 23 years old. I had finished a master degree in the University of Sao Paulo in Brazil. And I came to Paris, to France, to prepare a PhD in economics. Uh, I prepared the theoretical part of these uh, studies, and I went to work as an economist in an international organization. And from there, that uh, I discovered photography, and, uh, and I jumped from economics to photography. Economy gave me a fabulous base, a fabulous tool of uh, analysis to understand my planet, to understand the society that I'm part of it. And in these years that I start photography, in reality, I start photography in 1972. And uh, all these years, my photography was in, uh, in, in uh, coordination with our history. And uh, I do not choose to do this, was instinctively. And today, looking back, I see that I had a big chance to be linked very close to the historical moment that I lived. And my photographies represent a little bit of this. What sort of values did your parents instill on you growing up in farm area in Brazil? Do you think that's come travelled with you as you've progressed in your life and how it's influenced you? And yeah, uh, we photograph with our heritage in, an, in aspects of the heritage. For example, my statical heritage, my lights, my compositions came from these lights from the farm that I born in Brazil. It was a hilly area. My father had a big farm in Brazil and uh, I were in the deep 
high landers of this farm look at the arrival of the rain seas with this amazing cloud, this amazing tropical rain, and all these lights it stays, it stays inside me. I came from the most baroque state of Brazil, that is the state of Minas Gerais, the Portuguese baroque in reality, born there. And uh, you see, in a certain way, my photography is quite a baroque. And this is part of my heritage. I am part of this generation that's the first big group that walked to under the town. When I born Brazilians, leaving the field for 92%. Today, we are about 90, 92% urban. So we made a reversion of the model in Brazil. And uh, part of this first generation that abandoned the fields, went to the towns, made uh, studies to live in another way. And uh, that for me was very important. And, and leave these all conflicts in Brazil, this coup d'etat in 1964, all this youth repression, be a refugee in France. And till now, I'm a migrant. And uh, uh, all this together built my way of seeing, my my ideology, and link with uh, my way to see my aesthetics, because photography is a completely aesthetical language. And uh, all this together made uh, the, 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 the body of work that I, I work all my life long. And of course, you talk about your wife, Lelia, who's been with you from the start of your career and has been a partner to you in everything you were talking about, how she uh, does your books with you. How important is that relationship? How important has that been for you from the start, Sebastian? And probably the most important thing that ever happened in my life is the day that I met Lelia. We met in 1964. We are together after this moment. And we were very young. I was, say, not 20 years old yet. Lely was just at the end of the 16th. And uh, we are together till now. We built a life together. We had uh, many different experiences as refugees. As students, I made uh, my studies in economy. Lely is an architect. And uh, we were to get in group of studies, especially here in the University of Paris, and uh, we had our family uh, life. We have a Down syndrome kid. This Down syndrome kid uh, made a huge construction in our life. He built a lot of uh, different uh, ways to participate in the society, to see the society. My wife, after she abandoned architecture, she came to photography. We... And she designed all my books, she designed all my shows. We create an environmental project together in Brazil. Uh, Instituto Terra in Brazil uh, is today most probably one of the biggest environmental institutions in Brazil that plant and trees. We plant in our space today more than 3 million trees of more than 300 different species. We are building now the, the, the end of the construction of this kind of national park that we create in the old farm of my parents, that we transform it in a national park. And it's there that we plant all these trees. And now we started to plant one million trees again. But these trees that we are planting now is the one that we stay for one million years, for more than this, because it's the trees that arrive in, arrive in the end in the forest. We built a forest to wait the reception of these trees that we are planting now. And it uh, was fabulous. We, we create a water program in our valley. Our valley in Brazil is a valley as big as Portugal. And we are rebuilding the system of water in this valley. In this next 40, 50 years, of course, we'll be no more there, but the institution we go, we'll be planting more than 150 million trees 
to recuperate all the source of water of our valley. We will rebuild the water system of our valley. And this we do together with Lelia. No? We create a group in Brazil, it's a big group, a very nice group, and everything in the life we did together and we keep it going. <laughs> It's an incredible achievement what you've done with these trees. And as you say, they will last for beyond uh, your, your years. But it's also the same with photographs, isn't it, Sebastian? And how uh, that they will last too. What do you think makes a great photograph? Well, there is many different kinds of photography. I can say only for my kind of photography, that's human photography, that's environmental photography. You see, uh, in reality, we do not uh, really make these photographies. We receive these photographies. It depends on the way that we had a relation more nice or more strong, more tight with the community that were become to work with them, that you receive the more strong photographies. You must have a very big identification with the history that you do. In photography, you can photograph only stories that you have a big identification with them, to be comfortable there, to stay long time. My stories took long time. I just finished Amazonian. Uh, project that uh, I spent about seven years in Amazonia photographing. I did before that a story called Genesis about environment in the planet, what I spent eight years traveling all over the planet. You see, but if you, you are not in love with the planet, if you are not in love with the Indian communities, you cannot be there because if it's not your story, you cannot do it. But if it is your story, you are part of it. And photography is it. Photography is just a mirror of the society that you are part of. Well, you're also, of course, very well known for your striking monochrome images. How did you come to capture life in, in that way, more in, in black and white, Sebastian? Well, for me, it was very difficult to always to photograph in color. I love color photography. I have a very nice, good friend photographer sort of that do amazing for color photography, but not me. Me, when I went to photograph, when I be photograph something with uh, strong colors, as blue, as red, as green, and uh, always I knew that the moment to have the photography back, these colors we be having a very important impact, uh, visual impact in the, 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 the image. And for me, it was so disturbing. But when I was photographing black and white, black and white is an abstraction. Nothing is in black and white. But for me, going inside this abstraction was possible to transform it, all colors in different uh, kind of grays. And with this kind of grace, was supposed to me to concentrate totally in the subject, in the personality, in the dignity of the people that I was photographing, and was for me much more easy. You're often described as a social photographer, but how would you describe yourself? No, I'm not a social photographer. I'm not a, a former economist photographer. I'm not a a photo reporter. Photography is my way of life. Photography is my life. Everything that I do is linked with photography. My wife came inside the photography. And uh, I walk in photography all day long. Now we are preparing these Amazonian books after one year. And back there inside Amazon, just look at my picture, just edit and then that participate on them, then preparing these shows. You see, photography is a very powerful language. Just for all these languages that we have that represent the reality, only two languages don't need any translation. That is music and photography. Photography is something very powerful. Sometimes people said, Sebastian, you are an artist. I said, no, I am a photographer. It's a privilege to be a photographer. Photography brings you there. 
photography drive you in the most important months of the life of the society that you are part of it. Photography uh, resume your past, resume your ideology, it resume the group of people that are in front of you. When we have one photography, this photography has all of this inside. It's not easy to do a good photography. It's because this that I spend a lot of time. I spend years to do on a story. How difficult is it sometimes, though, to gain the trust of the subjects, of those that you photograph? And what have been some of your biggest challenges that you can think of so far? Well, probably the biggest challenge that I have in all my life long is when, uh, in the 90s, I was built on a story about the migration. Because I'm a migrant, I'm a refugee. A story that took me about seven years to photograph uh, the displaced population around the world. In the most difficult months in my life, I live in the former Yugoslavia, I live uh, in the genocide in Rwanda when I lose uh, the hope uh, about uh, my humankind, my peace. Uh, in this moment, I was 100% sure that we had as a space right to survive. We are so violent. I saw so dramatic moments in my life. I saw so many people die and die by the viol violence of the others. And uh, that uh, for me was very difficult, very, very difficult. I, in this moment, uh, I was about to abandon photography because uh, I had no more wish to photograph. I abandoned everything. I went back to Brazil, it was exactly this moment that my parents become old, that they gave this land to me, to Lelia, and that we transform this land in a national park and we plant a forest there. And uh, see these trees grow, uh, that uh, take care of my health. These trees was the medicine that I get to become back to photography, to become back to life. But as you say, you've witnessed some of the worst kinds of worst human atrocities. Did you want to be there and document it to make a difference in the world, to bring the world's attention to them? When you do these stories, you don't do alone these stories. You are just a small part of these stories. And when I was photographing Rwanda, I were not alone. I had a big group of my friend photographers, a lot of cameramen, a lot of journalists. And we are just a little bit a small piece of this story. And is where we are till now. I am uh, now becoming old. And uh, just after the presentation of this big show that we are preparing about Amazonia, uh, I will be about 80 years old. Probably I will be too old to go. But uh, there is a replacement generation that is there walking the same way that I did, and uh, this we continue. This is a need of our society. As I said a few minutes ago, photography is the mirror of the society. And these young photographers, like I, me, I were 50 years ago, they are going to do what I did 50 years ago. They will be doing for me. Sebastian, was it ever difficult when you were photographing these atrocities? Was it sometimes hard to stand back and look through the lens at what you were witnessing. You see, it's very difficult for a photographer. Photographer walks alone. When you are there, you are with yourself, with uh, what you have inside your mind, with your camera, and uh, some things you don't photograph. Some things so hard that it's better to get your cameras put in the ground and cry because it's very difficult, very difficult moments. Some moments you must photograph because you must show what's happening, that the things don't happen no more. Sometimes people come to your camera like they were come to speak in a microphone. They come to speak to your lens, ask you to do to photograph. I was with big groups of refugees in Africa, in many different spaces, many different points in photography. 
path always alone. In this moment, you need to have a concept, your personal concept of ethics. And what is ethics? Ethics is one for you. Is one different for me, for different for other persons. And in these moments, you must choose what to do, what not to do. It's very difficult. It's very hard for a photographer. It's because this, as I said to you a few minutes ago, I become sick. I was completely sick. It was necessary me to abandon because I start to die in function of all this violence that I saw in Africa. And you did go home, as you said, and that's when you created the Instituto Terra organization. And you've told us about what, how the trees will, will make a difference. What else do you want that legacy to be from the planting and replanting? What hope do you have for that? You see, when you go to a project like this, you have nothing in mind than planting trees. Uh, we were semi not uh, uh, ecologists. We we're just normal people that receive a slice of land, one dead land because the erosion was there also. And uh, I said uh, to Lelia, Lelia, I will abandon photography. What will you do with this land? And Lelia had the idea, she said, but why you do not plant the forest that was here before? He said, why not? That's a fabulous idea. And we started to plant the forest, not just to plant a forest. But planting a forest, you discover that you are creating an amazing technology because we had no technology to plant in large scale the rainforest. We were having this, building this technology. To build this technology was necessary to build a huge nursery we create one of the biggest nurseries of, of native plants in Brazil. And it uh, was necessary to have technicians in order to, to build this forest. We create a small school of technicians. And uh, we start, uh, I had a small name in photography. I started to turn in all this planet, apply for money. We are not rich, I'm just a photographer. My wife is just a designer. And we raise money. And we start, we plant it, and today, when you look, you say, God, we have an amazing forest with monkeys, with jaguars, with more than 170 different species of birds. And uh, we have nothing in place, but just a, a, a soil with uh, grass for cattle. And today is a fabulous rainforest on it. You see, today, uh, you can say, well, you had in mind to build all this. We had in mind to build nothing. The things appear with the evolution. Built one was necessary to, 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 to solidificate it, to, to, to build again and build again. In a moment, we had something built around that had some sense, some meanings. We had a forest, we had a school, we have a nursery, we have a program to rehabilitation of a full valley. And that came slice by slice, slowly by slowly. It, that is the evolution, that is the story of the humanity. What is the story of the humanity? It's the dreams. The dreams that materialize it. And from this materialized dream, you have a dream again. And you built over a dream. And that, that just happened. And that... that, that Keep it going like this. How proud do you think your parents would have been if they could see what it is today? That's a very special question, Tanya, because uh, when I started photography, my father was very upset. And he said to me, Sebastian, to be a photographer was not necessary to go out from here, to make all these studies, go to Paris. You stay here and work with local photography in our small town. You'll be a photographer close to us. But slowly by slowly, he understand that photography was not just that of a small photographer inside a small town in the interior of Brazil. And when we had the land and we started to plant in the forest, my father was also very upset because it was a big farm. It was supposed to, have, to us to have thousands of head of cattle. And we abandoned this idea. We get this land, we create one non-governmental organization, and we gave the land for the non-governmental organization. The land is not ours. And uh, my father was very upset, but 
when he was real very old, about to die, he came to Lele and me, he said, guys, you were right. The only thing that was supposed to grow here in this dead soil was the native trees that were here before. And he sold the trees small. I believe that now he'll be very proud to see a fabulous forest in place what were just a cottage station. And how do you think your years of photographing what you have have changed you or shaped you as a person? You've said and you've talked about that very challenging time when you got sick and you went home. But what are other instances? How have they shaped you? You see, uh, we change nothing with what we do. I tell to you a few minutes ago, uh, we are just a small piece inside the a system. I believe that my photographies, with your text, with your journalism, with the other photographers, with the other writers, with the non-governmental organizations, with all the humanitarian organizations, we, we participate in a movement. I don't believe that my photographies alone change anything, but together they had to change something, I'm sure. And what advice do you have for the next generation? Of course, we have mobile phone cameras now, social media, and technology that's changed the way of photography. You see, not only for photography, for any kind of the things in the life. We are a gregarian species. We are made to live in group. And the most important concept inside the group is the community, the sense of the community, we are part of a community, is solidarity in any kind of job that we do, any kind of creation that you do. These two variables are the most important inside this model of life is community and solidarity. And with everything that you've seen so far, do you remain optimistic for our planet? Well, it's very hard to say that I, 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 I remain optimist. I saw so many degradation. I saw so many violence. That is very difficult to be optimist. But to be coherent with all other species, that we are just one species between thousands, probably millions of different species, and that uh, we must accommodate uh, ourselves inside this huge community that uh, is our planet. And if you understand this, we be possible to us to survive as a species. And I have a big hope that we go in that direction, that we can evolve in the direction that we can integrate to our planet. The contrary, the planet we push us out of it. We become just an alien, like we become to be. We are all we urbans now. We urbans, you live in, in London, we live in Paris, others live in New York. We are not living in our planet. We are living in London, in Paris, in New York. We don't understand our system of waters. We don't understand our mountains. We don't understand our jungles. And that, we must go back to our planet. Not that we believe in our planet, but spiritually, we must go back to the planet and be part of it. Do you think the pandemic will help with that in a way? It'll make humans think about resetting what is important. That is my big hope, Tanya, that this pandemic bring us the concept of the essential. And uh, uh, essential is not to have a big account in a bank, to have a big car. Essential is to love each other, is to be close of each other, is to be part of uh, this huge human community. And looking back now, what do you think has been your proudest achievement so far? <laughs> Probably the biggest achievement that I did all my life long was to love my wife. Loving my wife was possible to me to build anything that I wish in my life. And uh, 
I believe that it is. And just finally, what would you like your legacy to be? You see, I don't believe in legacy. I don't believe in legacy. Legacy exists after that you are no more here. And uh, legacy is not you that built. It's the pu- people that uh, built for you. We are not here to build a legacy. We are here to live, to live in peace with the community, to live in peace with our planet. And, uh, and that's it. No more than that. The day that we disappear, we disappear. Other generations come to build other things. But uh, my hope is that uh, what we built, others continue to build and that we can construct a best way to live together. Sebastião Salgado, thank you so much for joining us on the Davos Agenda and many congratulations on winning the Crystal Award. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you very much, Tânia. It was my pleasure to be here.